Well, this project has been um, a series of different things, sometimes boring but sometimes really good, and we're, te we're technically make making it towards a really big exhibition that we're going to do. Well, we went to London and we um, went in the Tate and the Victoria and Albert and we um, discussed what we liked and what we disliked. And we looked at other people's art because that like kind of inspired us to think, okay, that goes with that lighting, that background goes with that picture, and like what dark colours go with light colours and stuff. We had a bit of a look at the artwork there, and then we like we kind of got inspiration from there. We had um, a few different categories and there was loads of artwork so we had to put down what we thought was in that category of artwork and we um, ended up deciding three things and then it got narrowed down to one. So we were just like, what should we do? And we were like, there was like two options. There was like happy, scary, like those were the main options. And like everyone loved horror movies and stuff. So we were just like scary because like, or through the thing, we were just doing scary stuff, so we thought that would be the best. Because because we decided on the theme of like monsters, we like kind of we kind of looked just to see which ones were scary, and like we found these two dolls which were really scary. And we got together in groups, and we decided on what we would like, and then we came together as a big group, and then just chat, had a chat, and then decided on what we wanted. And so like we had a look at a few bits of work, and then like we picked which ones that we wanted in our exhibition and then um, Ellie told, well, asked the artist whether we could use the art and yeah, so we went from there. We chose like, most of the children chose the same thing as each other so that was okay. It was more about feelings rather than how it looked. We've made um, little versions of the gallery and like we've been like, like saying where to put each bit of artwork and like, so it's like basically the, like, a box but then we have to kind of cut out bits and put them in. My favourite part of the work that we're going to be putting in our gallery is the eyes and what they do is that once you walk in and you get really close to them they will like open up and they'll follow you just one person around the room and they'll go to different people. And like I like Scooby-Doo and stuff. I used to have like a painting and used to follow you around the room and I was just like, oh, and I see this and I think, oh, that's kind of the same. And we're also gonna have this typhoon thingy. We don't know where we're gonna put it yet. We might put it in the win near the window or in the middle of the room so people can be like, what's that when they come in? This is one of my favorite bits of artwork and that's because um, it reminds me of somebody being really lonely and on the wall there it looks like there's somebody who's like just dead and like hanging off the wall and it's really like say loneliest and a bit darkish as well because of the colour on the wall and the carpet and it looks like also to me that somebody's been there and had the um, thing sat there and they made a mess of the room and it's just really interesting to see. I'm Cheyenne Parker, I'm a young curator voiced by Ellie. We went to London to look at art and get an idea of what to do. Um, I saw a black room with lots of videos popping and flashing by which was by Bill Viola at Tate Modern. You got a real feeling of how people felt. Our show is dark and it gives you a feeling of fear. As a young carer you have a lot of emotions and one of the big ones is fear. Fear of losing, losing everything. My favourite piece of work in the show is their twister. Life is like a twister. It can come slowly or suddenly very fast and, and you never know what's going to happen. I want audiences to see the twister and know how young carers feel. I'd like them to feel that fear and that sense of unknown. I feel that quite a bit. The windmill makes you feel scared, like you've been alone. It's the dark background and a, a dark colour and then that tiny light bit in the middle is like your mind. You feel confused and lost. 
However powerful the wind is, the windmill never moves. When everything gets bad, you can't move from that dark place. Um, my friend Faith um, said this, um, she wrote down this speech about this thing she called Jim Bob Dave. Um, this is Faith's favourite piece. The painting is happy and sad. It's stuck in time, which is like being a young carrot. Sometimes you need to stop because you run out of steam. It's good to have a break, but then you think about all the sad things happening in your life. I think you think, what, what is that? And like, what, I want to know more about it. And that's what we want people to feel. Children might be a bit more scared than what the adults would be. Because they might, because um, of the giant teddy bears, they might like be a bit freaked out. I think um, adults will be okay, not really scared, because they've probably watched a few movies that are a bit scary as well. Some of the pieces are a bit sad, which is a shame, because one minute you're like really scared, next minute you're fine, next minute like you're really sad. It's basically only art and it isn't going to hurt you in any way. Is it? <laughs> well, it could be scary, but you know. It's still not going to do anything. <laughs>
and knowing that you're 10 or 11 or 12 and that you've been dealing this with, with this for years. It's about that but I'm really intrigued by the name I'm Beautiful now because it was a unanimous choice to go with that. And it kind of came out of nowhere. And so for me, I think my reflection is I'm beautiful now. I don't think it's a mistake or a, um, a coincidence that this was put together by nine young women, nine girls. I think this is a show in some way about being a princess in a tower saying I'm beautiful now where is my rescue squad? Who is coming to get me? Where is the handsome prince, please? Because that should surely be what I deserve. I think you have to believe in the process. So I think if on day two we'd have said, go on guys, make an exhibition, it would have been very different from the exhibition we've ended up with. So I think you have to trust that what we do gets the Gets, gets things out of people, gets them to be able to make the choices they've made. Um, devising this was really good fun. We, there were moments where it was really, really difficult, but there were moments where we just had like an outrageously, screamingly funny time. So one of my favourite bits that will stay with me for a really long time was I was given um, three of the girls, I think it was Jolene and Crystal and I think Shy, and we were given the task to create an installation. So we were at the artist training bit before we moved on to curating. We had to create an installation that gave people an emotional response. And we were set the task of using the ladies' toilets at Radiant. Um, and it was amazing. We kind of created this bed and we darkened out the space and we got people to lay down and we crouched under the cubicle doors and told people this story and then dragged them through at the last minute. Just And people screamed half the time. And it was just, it was so funny and it was so um, ridiculous. But even then, and that was day one or two of an eight day devising process, we were making work about terror and about not being able to predict the future. And I do find it really interesting I, I think my view is that art is for everyone and it should be for everyone and it can be put together by everyone, made by everyone and I think at Radiant we are really driving that home and um, opening it up to kind of people that maybe would never even consider going to the arts because maybe they just don't know how or they've never even thought about it but I think we just want to widen it up to everyone and let everyone be a part of it. I think in terms of the content of the show, and I'm looking at it now being built in the background, um, the girls made extraordinarily sophisticated decisions, especially considering when we began, most of them thought art was very much in the whole drawing, painting and maybe taking a photograph sphere. There breadth of knowledge or sophistication to analyse works was still very young and, and not developed that much. What we found throughout the process is we have some young women here who are extraordinarily gifted at this. Their observational powers and their ability to um, analyse work, make sense of work and make really well thought through decisions is clearly there. Those decisions were not, we didn't manoeuvre them, we didn't manage them, we didn't manipulate them. They made those choices for themselves. And I think people in the art world will see that those are sophisticated choices in terms of content, in terms of form, and in terms of the spatial planning in the gallery, if you're inside or out. Um, I think there's a lot to admire in this piece of work and I hope that audiences will find it very engaging and meaningful and both easy to um, understand but also rich, texturally rich, something that means something to them too. I think the difficulty for people is that they, there are many models that people select work. Um, you get call outs where uh, you know, different groups of people, communities are selecting work but rarely are they 
going through a process where they almost while they know why they want the work, um, often it's just they, they are kind of given things. So um, we guided them and steered them and, and got things out of them, weeded out things that maybe they didn't know about themselves or what they were actually thinking to make their choices, which in certain regards are kind of unconscious, but they're but making them conscious as well, so they actually know why they've chosen the work. We know that when you um, put people through very intense, dramatic, um, reasonably high energy processes, it gives them a chance to almost like rethink themselves, reinvent themselves and, and kind of take that forward. Or the intensity of the experience creates change that a more long-winded one might not necessarily. The difficulty for us in doing that is we don't know the young people before we start working with them so it's hard to know for sure at this point what the long-term benefits have been for them definitely they've said themselves things like um, they feel more confident they'd like to engage with the arts more that they feel more able like they have a broader um, skill set engaging in art at school for example which will just benefit them academically I think their critical thinking skills have probably developed massively. And part of that is they came with, but part of it is understanding the task of how you make decisions. So it's not that we've put that into them, it's that we've drawn their attention to those moments of making decisions. And I hope they take that with them. I think for some of these young people, um, hopefully, they will go on to have a career in the arts. Even though they were only 10 or 11, there are some really bright stars here who could be extraordinary practitioners and I hope for the arts that they are but equally these young people might go on to be doctors or lawyers or start hippie commune somewhere I don't know what they'll do but they are amazing people and I feel very delighted to have had time to play with them but also maybe to have um, nurtured and hopefully given them some honest holding and reflection of what amazingly lovely people they are and how much extraordinary potential they have. This was my second or third project with F. I'm quite new. Um, and it's been a real roller coaster of emotions, um, really hard work, but equally just the most rewarding and most incredible journey um, to see these girls when they started and where they got to in the end it's just been incredible and I feel so privileged to have worked with them and I feel really just so excited for them that they've done this and excited for what the future is going to bring for them because they're incredible young people and I think they're going to do amazing amazingly well in whatever they they want to they're amazing <laughs>